church say amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sister, for your prayer. If you can, and if you haven't already stand, I read the word. The word will be coming from the book of New King James Version. And I'll be reading from Ephesians uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 15 through 21. And it will read, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he grant you, according to the riches of his glory, be to be strengthened with mighty by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, and may be able to comprehend with all saints that the thing which is the breath and the man and the devil and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which presents knowledge that ye might be filled with all fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to exceed abundantly above that he had asked of him think, according to the power of working in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. I have amen. Amen. And may the Lord have a blessing on the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. May we bow our heads and take it to the cross. Father God, we come this morning to to the Father God, thanking you, Father God, for this day. A day that you have made that we will rejoice and be glad in. Yeah. We thank you, Father God, for the thank you, Father God. Lord. We look for the hill which comes out of it. It all comes from you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank, thank you for you. my mind being in the right way. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for my heart being pure with joy. And thank you, Father God, that my soul is. Spirit, yeah. your spirit, Father God, because it is you, Father God. You are the Alpha and the Omega, Father, the beginning and the end. You are everything that I need, Father God, and you are all that I want. Father God, I ask you to bless your members that 
Lord, and taking our communion together. He's a good and merciful God. And all we have to do is give it all over to Him. We'll feel so much better. Hallelujah. I'm going to come from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. If you would go ahead and grab your communion cup. Thank you, Pastor.
Good morning and welcome. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. All right, now this is for June the 4th. Our ministry leaders are asked to attend the leadership prayer meeting 4 p.m. today. The New Bethlehem congregation are also welcome to attend. Small group meetings starting June the 7th at 6.30 p.m. Everyone is asked to purchase the book. The cost is $20. All right, we got a news flash. The scholarship has awarded, the scholarship committee has awarded two recipients for our church scholarship. They will be awarded today, Kalani Triplett, Jeremiah Hartnett, and along with their families, and the pastor will have encouraging words for them, okay? All right, upcoming events. The Bethel will host a new Salem district meeting July the 9th through the 14th. There will be morning and evening class. More information will follow as soon as it becomes available. New Bethel will be going to Branson Sight and Sound Theater production of Esther, Saturday, July the 22nd. Attention ministry this before planning an event. Check with the church office staff to make sure that there are no conflicts. Provide all announcements to sister work by Tuesday of every week. Notify the meeting ministry to information and be uh, advertised on the church website. The big screen and the for, a, for the media support, such as microphones, music, etc. Check with the music ministry for the Vermont Christian for musical support. Thank you for your cooperation. New members needed for Angel Choir and Team Praise and Worship Team, ages three and up. Contact Sister Nikki Johnson or Sister Charlotte Hood. Health Unit Ministry, contact Sister Kenesha Smith. Volunteers needed. Oh Lord, we need a lot of volunteers, y'all. Volunteers need for men's security. Contact Deacon James Augustine, Children and Youth Ministry. Contact Deacon Tyrone Smith. Who ready to contact Deacon Roland Ames. Kingdom Builders Ministry. Contact Sister Jabetta Carter or Sister Charlotte Hood. To report any members who are sick or in the hospital or to report any deaths, you may call the church office or get a prayer request card from an usher. Prayer line available every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 6 a.m. Don't forget to include your prayers, our members, relatives, friends, service men and women, and our leaders in our church and our country. God sure will buy the seed for the Spirit. You never get a busy signal when you want to talk to God. Psalms 50 and 15 says, And call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and will honor you. Y'all have a good day.
they'll just find you and then take you back to their flat. I don't want us to ever take them for granted and these singers that sing glory to God. That, that, he, that, that, that these Hebrew hymnals show you that being a Christian is not without trouble. That you as a believer will go through trouble. You will hear things on the news that from large preachers and mega pastors that, that, that they name the name of Christ, but you hear
Now, I would like to tell you that manna is like a Krispy Kreme door. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but it had to be something very astronomical and awesome. Because them jokers was going out seven days a week and God had to put it all in. Don't do it on the six days and get double on the six days. Don't come back out. It was that good. He spake secret rain man from heaven and then they asked him for quail. These are some silly folk that God give you the job you want and then you complain about the job you wanted because the job you wanted makes you actually work and now you're mad at God for giving you what you want. Did that make sense to you? He's been good to them and he's been long suffering with them. He's been walking with them when they asked for kings and when they disregarded him, when they talked about Moses, when they put their mouth on, on Joshua. He's been with them. And now this king that God has ordained down at Jesse's house, his name is David. David writes to us what all of Israel and what all of New Bethlehem, what all of East St. Louis and what all of Metro St. Louis goes through, the ups and the downs of life. But here's your consolation, and I want you to remember this, that you are safe in His arms. And God will keep you. Somebody say, God is keeping me. When we find David in, in a state of his life, David is going through a couple of different things because if you read this, that God's Hand is on David. Now, in your Bible, in my Bible, there is a head that describes this psalm. This psalm looks at four different areas that we're going to look at today. We're going to look at security, salvation. We're going to look at discernment and deliverance. This is what David writes to us. He says, God, because my life is full of ups and downs, because I don't understand everything, because I'm a Christian and everything's not perfect, here's what I surmise about my life, and here's what I encourage you to do today. Here it is. In thee, O oh Lord, do I put my trust. Yeah. Problem is that our trust is in everybody else and in everything else but God. And the problem is so many times, sometimes, God is our last resort. We have tell people after they've exhausted all of their earthly means, we then come with this religious, dry, played out phrase, but just pray about it. Oh, no, 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 not just pray about it. You should have been praying about it. You should have been repenting. You should have been asking God to fix it. You should have been asking God to, God only got three class because some of y'all still trusted in yourself. Here's what the Bible says. Some trust in horses and others trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name anybody trusted in it. That's your own school. Anybody leaning on him. Come on, see, probably you're going to pull that lean inside. Anybody know that David said, in thee, not in my pastor, not in the deacons, not in the neighbors on the side of the building, not in the denomination, in thee. David makes it clear who he's trusted. Can I tell you something that you already know, but I want to make sure that you know that by no stretch of the imagination, I don't want you to get messed up. I am and forever will be a Chicago Bears football fan. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, brother. I got the mother's boy with me. The rest of my mom. The president of the mother's boy lived with those things. I want it to be clear who I root for. So on game day, I don't care who's playing. I'm rooting for one team. Now there's some teams I don't like. I ain't going to use the word hate. Because my mama said, you know, use that word. It's a strong word. But there's some teams I strongly dislike. <laughs> Keisha, there's a couple. I ain't going to say no names. But some of them are in Philly. I don't know none of them people. That, some of them happen to be in West Wisconsin. I ain't saying nothing about that. Some of them in New England. I'm just telling you that I want you to know. Who my David says, I don't want you to get it twisted. I'm not relying on Samuel. He anointed me, thank 
to let me never be ashamed. Deliver me. I love this last part. In thy righteousness. Let, let, let me be pastoral for a minute, not evangelistic. Here it is. That he says, in thy righteousness, deliver me. Well, if God delivers him in his righteousness, that meant that David has to be judged for his sin. And the judgment for David's sin is death. So he's not talking about judging according to what I've done. Yeah. Somebody got it in the back. Yeah, don't judge me according to what I've done. Because if you judge me according to what I'm going to do and what I've already done, hell is my home. I need you to judge me based on what you've done or I say it done, and what you're going to do. Because God, if you judge me on my past and what I'm going to do, I'm going to fail every time. I need some real things here. But God, judge me because you're good. Don't judge me because I'm trying to be good. But judge me because you died for me. Judge me because you know the hairs on my head and you know the thoughts before I think them, but you still don't say me. Judge me. Then I'm good. But if you judge me according to my righteousness, we all lost. That's why you don't come on Sunday to hear me. Because I'm nothing. I'm not even worth a plumb nickel without God. That's why you need to be praying that God speak through me. Now I ain't telling you to pray that I say something that you want to hear. Because I'm not going to say what you want to hear. I said let God talk through me. Because all you don't want to hear. Come on, he'll tell you to leave that man alone that's been stringing you along for six years. See, some of y'all get mad now. He'll tell you to leave that girl alone that's been talking crazy for the last five years. He, he said he'll tell you to leave that child alone that's keeping you from church. Sometimes God will tell you stuff. Amen. Talk to a family member. She said to me, real briefly, Travis, she didn't call me pastor because I knew it was serious. She said, Travis, now, what do you think? Is this guy going to marry me? And I said, because you want me to be honest? She said, of course, I'm coming to you. I said, probably not. She said, what do you mean by that? I said, because they need to see this man. I said, here's what you need to do because you've been putting all of your hope in him. So this is what you need to do. You need to reevaluate your folks. I didn't say he wasn't going to get married. I just said he might not be the one. So this is what we do. We're going to reevaluate our relationship with God first. We're going to find out where me and him are missing. And see, once I line this, Reverend Nap, get ready to run your whole truck. You. Matthew 6, 33, that if I seek him first, all of these, y'all know this reverse. We off. Because if we off, this one will be off. And that's a hard truth. So she said, what you mean? I said, well, number one, you need to get saved. You're not even born again. So you can't even hear from God. Because John 9, 31, he doesn't hear a sinner, but if he didn't be a worshiper, what does that scripture mean? That when you were a sinner, the moment you say, Lord, forgive me, or Lord, I need you, you instantly become a worshiper. I said, you got to get born again. I said, let's get you born again. Maybe let's get you accepted Jesus, and now we can start this journey of being led by him. There's a famous book that's called uh, Borrowing from God. Borrowing from God. Yeah. And it's a, it's a Christian apologetic book, and it talks about atheists and how they borrow from God, but they deny God. What do you mean, Pastor? That, that atheists, there's no atheist in the world, no agnostic that believes that killing people for no reason is right. If you go to an atheist and you slap them in the face, I guarantee you they won't be a mad atheist. And then you ask them, why are you getting mad? They'll say, because you're wrong. And you'll tell them, where does the idea of wrong come from? Because morality 
beating doesn't just come out of the sky. There was no big bang for morality. And now the atheists and the agnostic are forced to face that there is a God that now gave us morality. Because if that ain't the case, I'm slapping every atheist I see. <laughs> it's going around. No, I ain't going wrong. I can just know there is a morality. See, when you get this right, I didn't say, look at me, I didn't say perfect. I said right. What is right? God, I'm wrong, you right, say me, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you really good, right? you're like, you're me. When you get this right, I said, because when you get this right, everything else gonna flow. But now I have to take her back to the text because there are some ups and downs with getting this right. Because, Pastor, what I heard you say, if I get this right, all my problems are going to go away. And the devil is alive, and so is you, because I didn't say that. I just simply said, when you get this right, all these things are going to be happening. Here's the good thing about God. God has shown you the now and the end. But he always leaves out the middle. Now, you didn't tell me they was going to lie on me. You didn't tell me that I was going to get laid off during the pandemic. You didn't tell me that I was going to get COVID even though I've been speaking faith. You didn't tell me that I was going to be coughing. People going to be looking at me. You didn't tell me none of that. But all you told me that you're going to work it out. I'm trying to figure out how and when. And this is what I love about God. He don't tell you the how and the when. He can say, keep on trusting me.
happened to your wedding. Somebody said to me one time, I didn't get an invitation to your wedding. That should have told you something. I didn't want no hate in the park. Why? Because of this in front of God and these witnesses. Can I help all the witnesses understand your role in marriage? And I say this often, that the witness is not supposed to be an ear for gossip when these two have a problem.
two things. I've never thought to ask them to help me with a bill. Right? Y'all should tackle me with that. <laughs>
that there, there are men in this church that I would have a problem trusting my life, driving, whatever we're doing. They built, we built a relationship to where it wouldn't be a problem. But there, that trust with humans is nothing like him. Because I will trust none of them men, there's no disrespect to them, I will trust none of them men with my soul going to heaven. So David says, not in my father, not in my title, not in my denomination, but into you, I commit my soul. I got a real this folks is walking at me, I'm preaching too long. Here it is, I commit my soul. I commit my soul because, Lord, if you don't get me out of this, I'm done. I've lost it. I defeated Goliath only because of you. I got rid of the lion and the tiger because of you and the bear. Oh my, because of you. It was you that got me out of the hand of Saul. David says with confidence based on the history that you and I have together, I'm committing my soul. Anybody fed up and made up in your mind that from hell or high water, you're committing your soul, your actions, your mind. I told them people got mad at me. I said, I'm going to trust God. Yeah. I didn't put people down for not getting the vaccination. I didn't boost people up for getting it. All I said was, whatever you're going to do, it better be by prayer and supplication. Yeah. And as a pastor, I have testimonies of folks who got the vaccination and was healed of COVID. I also got testimonies of people who got the COVID before there was a vaccination and God kept them. On the flip side, I got folks who passed away that got COVID with no vaccination and I got folks who got it. Here's the problem I'm trying to tell you. God was the consistent through all that. And here's what I'm here to tell you this morning. Just trust God. I've hated them that regard my vanities, but I put my trust in you. Yeah. The word hate there is not a Hebrew word that means what we think when you say you hate someone. And I know we've all been there that there are people that we just really, the thought of them, even right now as I'm saying it, making it an itch, twitch, whatever the case may be. Yeah. David says, I hated the folks who like lying like you hate them. With the righteous indignation, not for the person, but for the sin. Right. See, God does not hate people. Right. What he hates is the fact that we would allow the enemy to deceive us, to make us think that our children have enough sense to choose their own gender. They can barely pick out their clothes sometimes. <laughs> Why you don't tell me what you are? You have this couple that is a same-sex couple, and they thought they were saying something different. The kids taught me a new word. It's called ate. You think you ate that or something like that. They say, well, say something tough, whatever the case is. And so they thought they ate this. They said, well, our new baby, we're going to let uh, it decide what it's going to be. You see, I got mixed up. I, I got a bit sick. They're going to let it decide what it's going to be. I said, you're going to let a child determine what it is they're going to be when you have the ability in you as parents to speak life into your children. My kids disagree with me for a lot and I may pass them. They may not say it to me, number one. Number two, it don't matter what you disagree with. It don't mean I can't continue to speak life into you. And the problem with this generation that we live in, and yes, I tell you, you got to stop blaming young people. I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings. It's our fault. It's the old ones in us. We've let this foolishness go on too far. We let them come to church when they want. We let them wear what they want. We let them say what they want. I ain't got no problem. I'm going to work every day to a child I don't like 
themselves. That's our fault. But, but David says, guess what? I'm hating what I see. But I'm not perplexed, nor am I distraught for what I know can happen. Because David says, at the end of the day, God is going to fix everything that concerns you. Y'all miss your place to shop? Because some of y'all still mad that it's your fault. But you can clean it up because if you made the mess, you got the ability to clean it up. Here's what you do. David says, let me point you back to the source of my deliverance. Let me point you back to how we get this generation back on track. We don't let down, but we intensify our prayer. We intensify our preaching. We intensify our love. We let them sleep. We let them talk. But we tell them what David said in verse number 7. I trusted in you. Now I don't care if my mama told me years ago. I don't care what they do at someone's soul's house. I don't care what they do when I was over there. I don't care what your cousins do. I don't care what that old boy told you at school. When you in this house, you abide by these rules. And what we believe is that God the source and the strength of our life. He moves our fear. Y'all ain't talking to me. In other words, what we believe here is although things may get bad, God will still deliver you. What we believe is that although God allows things to happen, He's still God on the throne and He will get you out. Lean on your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, I know you've had some 
understand time. People my age, 16, they died. Shot. People younger than me died. I had a young man. He was a baby. Walked out and drowned in the pool. Parents are pastors. So time didn't really mean a lot. But now that you're getting older, time means. So my son can't wait to be an adult until it's time to start an adult team. Now he's been raised right. He has the core that he needs. He's going to be fine. But what I wouldn't give just to be 16 again. No bills. I mean, good sleep. That's my 
my sins, boy, bye. Because if you're going to get into a union, everything else got to be. I thank God for the two claps and two of them came from the deacon board. Y'all ain't said that. Every eye closed, I'm offering you Jesus today. Put your trust in him. Come to him and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I need you. Deliver me. I don't have time to keep walking around here religious with no relationship. I want to make sure that if you call me home tonight, I will go to heaven. If that's you tonight, I'm offering you three things. Salvation. That means you've never professed hope in Jesus. Come give your life to Christ. Being a good person will not get you to heaven. You must be born again. How are you born again? By making a confession that Jesus is Lord. Maybe you have already done that, but you need to repent. You need to rededicate your life. Come back to the Lord. He's married to the backslider. Come confess it. There's a minister here. There's a deacon. Deacon is there. Grab you by the hand. Third thing, you don't have a church. Meaning that you don't have a pastor that's looking out for you, that's teaching you, that's praying for you. You want to join this ministry. I want you to come. Jesus, Jesus. We got one coming. Come on, stop right here. Jesus, Jesus. Let's look at this prayer. Let me I go. Savior. Whoa. He's my Savior. The Lord is. Let's sing it again. Jesus, Jesus. Just call his name. Yes. We say Jesus' name. Real quickly, confession. Wednesday night, TJ rededicated his life back to Christ. He said, I want to make it official. And I want to join the church on Sunday. So that's why he's already a believer. But he wants to join the ministry. Now some have been saying, well, I I've seen him around here since he's been a child. Well, he never joined the church. Coming, serving, loving, being loved on. He says, I'm an adult now. I want to make a decision. Jesus, Jesus. Do me a favor, turn to your left, turn to your right. I know it's kind of awkward, but ask your neighbor if you want me to go down with you. And I want you to bring your neighbor down. If they need prayer, if they want to rededicate their life back to Jesus. Come on, ask. I know it's awkward, but it's your job. Anybody? Whoa! Jesus, Jesus! Oh, yeah! I want you to call his name. That's dad and son, ain't it? Young man want to give his life to Jesus. Come on. Enjoy with his daddy. You see his daddy walking down here. We call his name.
correct some theology real quickly. Just hanging around church is not the same as being connected. And I'm going to use TJ's example as we talked about this Wednesday. Since he's been a child, been around here. So you would assume that he was a member. He said, no, Pastor, I've never joined. I was with my mother when I was... He said, but I'm an adult. I'm thinking about doing ABC. I said, hey, man, God, you're an adult. You're grown. You have to make your decision. First thing we got to do before you join the church is you need to join his family. He said, I was a little nervous. So don't be nervous. I said, you'd be ashamed in front of God. God would be ashamed in front of his father. I said, come on down, God. And we give God praise. That young man that came and gave his life, we give him praise. So, Lord, thank you again. We don't deserve it, but you're still good to us. And we bless you. Help us as a church be good examples. Help us as a church strengthen their relationship. And help us as a church be great testaments for them. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Can you give the Lord praise for quickly? Listen, have your seat. We typically do offering. I don't want to do offering. I want you to stick with us. I know you've heard my voice a long time, but you're getting ready not to hear my voice here shortly because our education coalition, our scholarship committee has some wonderful and ginormous presentations to give to some individuals who have been blessed to be recipients of our scholarships and do better give yourself a round of applause because this is due to your giving and your faithfulness. But our, our scholarship committee come to, to the front. Can we receive them by saying amen? Amen. Really, God, can we help them up?
guys can't see on this picture, Jeremiah clean, he's smooth with his jacket on. I'm gonna hit show it to y'all, right? Let's good.
What an awesome committee. Come on. Awesome committee.
of children and teens um, from three on up to what, 18? Yes. And their parents. And their parents. And their parents. If we guys can come together right after church in the fellowship hall, we will have refreshments. We will have refreshments. We will try not to stay too long, but we want to get information from everyone and um, let you know our expectations for the Angel Choir and the Youth Choir and Youth Team Praise and Worship. Thank you very, very much. Awesome. Please be a part of that if you can. Uh, we also, too, uh, we, know, we now have the Young Men's Sunday School classes 12 to 18. Amen. If we started, amen. So if you want to know more about that, two people you can see, I believe, Deacon Rupert and I believe, Minister Charlie, you can see them. If you want your son to be a part of a young man's Sunday school, 12 to 18, Minister Charlie or Deacon Terrence Rupert, he's right back in the back, always working with that nice vacation shirt on. We give God praise for him. I love that shirt. That's a vacation shirt. We thank God for that. Listen, we're going to pray for your seeds. Thank God for our graduates. Can our graduates stand up one more time? The recipients, come on, have them stand up one more time. Let's celebrate one more time. All right. Father, I thank you for the seeds that we're getting ready to receive. Thank you that we sow unto you. And we thank you that you give back to us 30, 60, 100 fold. We rebuke and bind Satan on every hand and devour that tries to come and devour our seed. We thank you that our education wing is fully paid off and complete. We thank you for the right contractors, the right architects, the right electricians to come and put that together. We give you praise for what we're getting ready to do as it relates to a ministry. We thank you for all things. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We say amen. After you give your offering, you are dismissed. I speak a blessing over your life. It cannot be reversed, but it's a blessing that comes only from the Lord. But I say unto all, I say unto all, watch and pray. Amen. You're the